Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's information session about the Public Service Internship Program. My name is Eric, and I am the Associate Director of FIU in Washington, D.C. One component of FIU in D.C.'s operations is the Talent Lab series of programs, which supports our students and alumni in professional development internships and careers here in the capital. And this morning, I'm glad to have on the line one of our uh, partners, uh, internship nonprofit partners uh, in the area, the Partnership for Public Service. Before I introduce our guest, I'd like to say that I personally am a huge fan of the Partnership for Public Service. These are my talking points, not, not theirs, but I really appreciate how they work directly with the federal government to improve the efficiency of the federal government through programs that range from training and uh, leadership development uh, to hiring and recruiting. There are a lot of organizations in DC whose operations are to do a lot of thinking and a lot of writing about how things could be uh, more, more efficient. And I haven't met many organizations that go the extra step like the partnership to actually uh, directly partner with, with agencies to, to make those things happen. Uh, and you'll hear more from them about the type of work they do and the type of work you could do with them. So without further ado to talk about their internship program uh, and organization in general and sp some specifics for FIU students, I am joined on the line by Amiko Matsumoto from the Partnership for Public Service here in Washington, DC. Amiko. Thanks, Eric. And thank you so much for the opportunity to join you all. Again, my name is Amy Coe. I serve as the Director of Talent at the Partnership. And my hope today is to tell you a little bit about our organization so you have some background. Some of you may have uh, done some research on us in advance. Uh, for those who haven't, just to uh, give you a little bit of background of who we are. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about our intern program and the opportunity that uh, is available to you as FIU students um, and uh, in hopes that you'll think about applying uh, for an internship with us this fall. I do have some time built in for questions at the end, uh, but certainly if there are other things that uh, come up, uh, if you wanna put them in, uh, try to follow along with the chat box, or Eric, if you can flag those for me um, as we go, I wanna make sure that I'm getting you the information uh, that you need so that uh, this is a good use of your time. And I, uh, so the partnership, um, started with a commitment to public service. Um, we are a, a, an organization that began um, with a man named Sam Heyman. And Mr. Heyman uh, himself had answered President Kennedy's call to service when he uh, graduated from Harvard Law. He um, went to work for DOJ, had a phenomenal experience there, and went to run his family business when his father unexpectedly passed away. Um, years later, he was surprised to learn that uh, Harvard Law students were not going into government at the same rates um, that they had been when he graduated. He was curious if that was, uh, if that was because just Harvard or Harvard Law. Um, and when he found out that that was happening really across the country, he became very concerned. He understood that the value of public service for his own, uh, from his own professional experience and also understanding the importance of having uh, the right talent in government uh, to do its important work. And so he began to kind of think through what might be, uh, what might be a good solution to that. Uh, he, the businessman he was, had a lot of different conversations, was thinking about uh, how to approach it. And uh, as he was doing that, our um, CEO, uh, Max Steyer, was finishing up his term uh, at HUD. Uh, Max has worked in all three branches of government and was finishing up his time there. Did a bunch of informational interviews and it was now you gotta, you gotta talk to this guy named Sam, or you gotta talk to this guy named Max. Uh, the two of them got together and, and, really, and formed the, the Partnership for Public Service. And um, so our um, kind of origin story is, is very much about um, this commitment to public service and, and wanting to ensure that uh, the, the government had uh, both you know, great talent um, and was, was seeking to transform so it could better serve um, uh, the people there, so um, or, or the, the American people. So the the partnership formed um, really with two folks at the time, with uh, Max and a man named Kevin Simpson. Um, a few months later, it, it kind of grown to eight. Uh, today, we have over 100 members on staff, um, and uh, have done a range of things um, far beyond kind of our original focus, which was both kind of hiring and inspiring a new generation of federal employees, and then kind of advocacy piece of of transforming the way government worked. Um, 
Mr. Heyman initially uh, started the partnership with a, a generous uh, gift, uh, and uh, over time we have diversified our funding. We now uh, have revenue that comes from a variety of sources, including foundations, corporate sponsorship, uh, individual donors, we do fee-for-service work, um, and all of that will kind of come into play a little bit later when we talk about the types of work we do and the opportunities for you as interns uh, to engage uh, with the organization. Um, as I mentioned, our, our mission really is to, to revitalize the federal government. Um, we do that both by uh, inspiring a new generation to serve and by transforming the way government works. Um, we are uh, fiercely nonprofit and we are fiercely nonpartisan. Uh, and uh, that has, has been true from the beginning. It's true for, for how we go about our work today. And one of the things that uh, took place for us was uh, in addition to kind of the, the mission and the strategic work we wanted to do, um, we also are a very values driven organization. And there was a focus on um, and really codifying those values uh, at our core so that uh, we function in a way that's consistent. Um, we are passionate about public service. I don't know if we grew up wanting to, to help change uh, and improve the government in the same way we wanted, maybe wanted to be firefighters or teachers uh, or lawyers, but there's a, a sense that, that everybody at the partnership is really focused uh, on public service and, and cares very deeply about that work. Uh, we, we focus on people. Uh, the organization has been uh, one consistently that focuses on learning. We always want to get better at what we do. We always want to learn from and with one another. Um, there's a focus on leadership, both in terms of the federal government uh, and also recognizing that the people can lead from their level within our organization as well. And so we want to cultivate leaders. Um, that includes interns. Um, and we've had some, some uh, incredible things that have happened with the partnership over the years that have really come about from interns raising ideas and thinking through how, you know, how we might do something differently. Um, and so that kind of leadership and kind of people leading from their level is, 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 is core to who we are. Uh, we are a, a collaborative environment. Uh, we focus a lot on, um, on working together. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, kind of cross-pollination in, in the way that people engage with different programs or projects, um, different members of the team. Um, we do have folks kind of on a, on a home team, so to speak, uh, but there's a, a lot of different types of interaction that happen across the organization. Uh, the, another element for us is uh, the, the importance of uh, focusing on diversity, inclusion, uh, respect, and um, that's been part of our values, but as I'll get to in a moment, uh, we have uh, had a DEI initiative over the past few years um, that has really uh, helped uh, create some different intentionality around that. Uh, we are a persistent group. Uh, again, we're about 100 people uh, in staff. And if you think about the, the size of the federal government, which is a few million, uh, we are uh, have to be kind of smart and, and strategic in how we engage. Um, we are uh, small but mighty in that way and have really thought about ways that we can be persistent to drive change. Uh, there is sometimes that means playing a long game. Sometimes that means uh, really thinking through how to work with others to get things done. Uh, but the, the persistence of the partnership is, is part of who we are and, and really kind of what drives us in the day to day. Um, and then where you know, our promise value, uh, one focuses on um, the trustworthiness of the organization. We are an honest broker. We work with a lot of different entities um, and we know that we have to build and keep trust in how we go about our work. Uh, as I mentioned, we are nonpartisan. Um, doesn't mean that we don't have our own political beliefs. Uh, we, we have people who are very much engaged um, in, uh, in the public sphere, but, but from, a, um, from an organizational standpoint, we take a nonpartisan stance. Doesn't mean that we won't call things out as we see it. Um, Max, our, our CEO, has, has put forth uh, many an op-ed, um, and sometimes those are cheered, and sometimes those are not um, from folks in the administration, but it's not a partisan issue for us. It's what is really the right call for government and good management of government at the time. Uh, so uh, that is kind of our nonpartisan approach. Um, and then as a nonprofit, we're um, really focused on, on being fiscally responsible. We know that people have given us uh, uh, a lot of different, um, whether it be financial contributions or, or, or other sorts of things that have helped us uh, in our ability to, to get our work done. And we wanna be uh, faithful stewards of, of those resources. Um, so that's a little bit about our mission and values. Um, I won't read it here, but we do have our DEI commitment statement. Uh, this is up on our careers page. If you want to take a, a bigger look at it, and um, this was something that was uh, released uh, a few months ago, um, really in um, 
in the work of our DEI Council and uh, things that they have done uh, to engage our staff um, and our leadership. And uh, this commitment statement is a result of a lot of different focus groups and things that have um, uh, really kind of, they represent the, um, the commitment of our staff and where we see ourselves kind of moving in the future. And so I'd encourage you at a later date to take a look at that. Um, so you have a, a good sense of, of who we are as an organization and our, and our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion issues. A little bit about some of the context. Um, some of you are very familiar with the federal government. Uh, some of you maybe not so much. Uh, but the, the government is, um, is more than just the policies and practices of the day. Um, one of the things that I, I had worked for government in um, for about seven years prior to coming into the partnership, and one of the things that I really came to appreciate when I got to the partnership was just the, the, the vast um, work that the, that the uh, government does um, and how much it connects people with a lot of different sorts of, of uh, needs and, and issues. Um, if you care about homelessness, for example, there's no bigger funder on homelessness issues than the, the federal government. Uh, if you care about hunger, there's no larger uh, funder on, on hunger issues in the federal government. And there's so many different ways that the, the government responds to um, the needs of our country. Uh, and we've got uh, just considerable work to do. Um, the, the government, however, is in crisis. If you look at um, some of the things that are, are happening both today and, and kind of just historically, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you've got um, just a, a uh, some stats are on the side, you know, less than 6% of the federal government employees are under 30. If you think about how much has changed um, the different tech skills, the different uh, perspectives that, that our uh, younger generations bring, uh, not having more representation in the government is, is a challenge. We've got a, a lengthy hiring process. Um, a lot of times people are, are frustrated um, as they're applying for federal positions, uh, both in the, the process and in the um, in the length of time that's there. Um, we've got a system that was uh, largely done in the 70s uh, and the world and uh, has changed so much since then and, and uh, you know, business practices and, and how things can get done. So there's so many different things that um, have really positioned uh, this time as, as really kind of at a tipping point for our government. Um, and this is where the partnership I think has, has particularly thrived in and comes in is that our, um, we've been doing this work for, uh, for several years now. The, um, the work that we do continues to grow more sophisticated and uh, we're really taking hold of an opportunity to help the government become more efficient and more effective in what it does. Um, we are uh, doing a lot of different things to help make that happen. You have some things there at the bottom. Uh, the government, uh, uh, we continue to push on government legislation. The partnership has championed uh, more than 34, uh, uh, I think we're, uh, we're maybe a little bit higher just now, so you know, more of a 30 uh, pieces of legislation. We do a lot of leadership development and training uh, for people throughout government, but particularly at more senior levels. Um, we recognize federal employees through a program that we have called the Service to America Medals. Um, and the partnership, I think, has really tried to focus on coming at improving government in a lot of different ways. Um, Max often talks about you're not going to change government by doing one thing. And I think our organization is really set up to address the different types of things happening in government in a lot of different ways um, and, and to address that. Um, our approach, uh, you see, we're, we're really focused on uh, being a, a good partner, true to our name, in that um, we want to actively work for positive change. Um, one of the things I appreciate about the organization is that it's very optimistic uh, in our approach. And um, uh, you see some other things there that are, are we're focused on the credibility of the organization, again, as a nonpartisan, uh, in our nonpartisan approach. Uh, we focus on continuity. Again, this is not a, uh, an issue for us of um, who, you know, which party is in power, but really how do we work with administrations uh, across time and um, providing some continuity there. Uh, we're a connector. I think one of the things that I've really come to appreciate is that um, the way in which the partnership works with different entities, uh, whether that be philanthropic organizations, corporate sponsors, government itself, uh, there's just a real focus on, on connecting folks and, and working together. And then we really are uh, serving as a catalyst in a lot of things that the ideas that we're bringing forth, our research reports, uh, the different things that are helping to, to champion legislation uh, and, and prompt leaders to think differently are all uh, part of, kind of what, what we do and how we do it. 
Um, the, the partnership has a, a strategic plan. Uh, some of the things that we're focused on, um, particularly in the next few years, is um, the uh, with the, uh, essentially a change of administration, but we do have, um, whether it be a new administration coming in with 2020 or a second uh, term administration um, that happens in 2020, uh, there's a, a real focus on wanting to make sure that that transition is, is good uh, and solid. Uh, we want to really focus on the performance of government, helping to ensure that uh, we have information about uh, government performance and that's driving uh, improvement in, in how we go about our work and, and how the government uh, go about its work. Um, we want to make sure that we're providing models and tools and um, helping agencies be more effective in the day-to-day -day work that they do. And we want to kind of work across, uh, again, kind of in that partnership model, working across uh, agencies, branches of government, different sectors to solve really big problems. Um, we've taken on a lot over the, the years here and um, continue to think about how we can be a, a stronger partner, how we can help uh, prompt change and, and do that in really meaningful ways. So that's a little bit of background of the organization. And um, I want to share that so you kind of have a context of what is uh, the type of organization you'd be a part of if you chose to uh, apply and, and were uh, accepted for an, an internship this fall. Um, I'm really excited about our internship program. I worked in higher ed for a number of years uh, prior to my time in government and, uh, and at the partnership. And I could found students with uh, come back from internships and it was things like nobody knew their name. They had really, um, uh, you know, kind of very basic tasks. They didn't feel like they were using their skills well. Um, there was just a, a challenge of feeling like it was a, a meaningful time. Um, in, in oftentimes in, in, in um, several of the internships that our students, that, that my students had. And uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about the partnership is the care and focus it takes on the intern program. Uh, we've had an intern program for as long as I've been there, and I think certainly longer than that. Um, it's really been a pipeline for us as an organization. We've uh, hired many folks from our intern program to become full-time staff members. Um, and we've really seen the opportunity that we have to help shape somebody's path, even if they choose not to stay at the partnership, um, that we have a role in their growth and development, uh, helping them understand the importance of an effective government and uh, how their own experience uh, can be enhanced through the work that they do with us. So I'm going to share some of the basics of our program and then uh, talk a little bit about the specific opportunities available in the fall. Um, so we do have uh, our application open now. Uh, that will start in, uh, it goes from now until July 3rd. Um, we try to move quickly in reviewing uh, uh, applications, doing interviews, and making selections. So our hope is to have notification by late July or early August, uh, so folks would know uh, for their plans for the fall. Uh, we're in a little bit of a different situation with uh, COVID-19. Uh, the partnership moved to remote work uh, in March, and uh, we have uh, been consistently in remote work since then, um, including our interns. Uh, we had an intern cohort that was with us in the spring. Uh, they were physically in the office with us and then um, went to remote status. We just started our summer cohort, um, all working remotely. Um, and in the fall, we anticipate that we'll be in um, virtual status as well. Um, however, if um, things change and the um, uh, DC guidance, CDC guidance allows us to, to bring people back to the office um, and people are in DC, they would certainly welcome, be welcome to come into the office as well. What we're doing right now uh, is preparing our office for hoteling um, so that uh, basically that's a concept that uh, instead of having everybody having their own desk, um, basically all workstations would be available, um, for, you know, kind of at a social physical distance space for people to basically come in and say, I'm going to be in the office tomorrow. Uh, they'd be assigned a desk um, area that they would they'd be at um, for that day. And that for us right now, our expectation is not that people are coming in um, on any sort of a regular basis, but we do have some employees who would benefit from uh, be having uh, an office environment to, to go to. So we are uh, making that available if people want, but we are not requiring that at all. And we're expecting most of our employees to be in remote status at least through Labor Day. Um, and then come fall, we'll kind of, again, kind of reassess and see if things have changed. But our expectation is that most folks will be in, in remote status or some combination thereof 
Um, I do think that there's value to being in an office environment as an intern. Um, so if we have the opportunity and you happen to be in DC, we'd certainly uh, welcome an opportunity for you to, to come to the office. Um, again, assuming we're, we're open. Um, but if not, we certainly understand the, the health uh, factors and, and want to make sure that our employees are as safe as they can be. Um, and for many folks, um, they're choosing to, to stay uh, in remote status, uh, kind of in, uh, you know, kind of through the, the pandemic. So that we're planning on having all of our internships be virtual for the fall. Um, we do offer paid internships. Uh, that's, uh, you see the rates there, 800 a month for current undergrads, um, prorated if somebody's working part-time, $1,000 a month for graduates, um, and then, and that's again prorated if they're uh, part-time. One of the things that I'm particularly excited to share with you is that we have a donor who has um, provided funding specifically for FIU students to intern at the partnership. Um, as, as much as we have our own uh, process and uh, competitive process that way, uh, that a donor has, has very generously said he uh, very much wants uh, FIU students to have the opportunity to be at the partnership as an intern. And so there are some funds available um, for that purpose. Uh, so that, and that doesn't happen for every school. So we're excited that FIU is, is a part of that mix. Um, another piece of our internship program is that we have professional development that goes throughout um, for our internship, our intern cohort. Uh, it is incredibly important to us that, that people feel like this is a place that they can grow and develop. Um, there's a lot of different experience to be gained through the day-to-day -day work that people do. Uh, but there's also a sense that um, there are other things that would be helpful in uh, providing professional development for our interns. Um, so we, we've had interns request things like uh, sessions on how to network or public speaking or you know, kind of a range of things. And we've really tried to meet the needs of our, um, of our uh, interns and, and interests as we do that through the, um, the professional development that we offer. Um, in addition to supervisors, each uh, uh, intern is given a partnership buddy uh, that is somebody who can uh, help them navigate the organization. It's just another professional contact for them to have uh, as part of the organization. And um, you know, our hope is that people have a lot of different ways that they connect uh, with, with partnership staff as, um, as they experience their internship. That's a little bit about the basics. Um, now I wanna get into the, the intern positions that are available for the fall and tell you a little bit about each of those teams. Uh, the Center for Presidential Transition, uh, again, doing a lot of work given that it's uh, an election year. Um, this is not about uh, transition from for one candidate or another, but simply to say there will be a transition, whether it be a first term administration or a second term administration, um, there's a, a, a transition that occurs and we want to help folks uh, be ready for that as much as possible. Um, the Center for Presidential Transition works with agencies um, to help them get ready uh, for that. Um, that that's all kinds of information that's shared. It's all kinds of, uh, you know, kind of getting ready on that front. Um, if any of you have a, are looking for a good book to read, Michael Lewis's The Fifth Risk um, focuses on the, the presidential transition during the Trump uh, administration and um, it kind of speaks to just the different sorts of things that happen in the process of, of a transition there. Um, but our Center for Presidential Transition does just, just a lot um, with agencies and then with transition teams um, and, and helping them to prepare. Uh, whether again in this case for a first year administration or a second uh, first term or second term administration uh, we're available to, um, to to those transition teams to help make that uh, as, as smooth and effective as possible uh, the types of things that the center interns work on i uh, really do range and um, they can assist with everything from podcasts to uh, drafting materials to um, researching different uh, pieces of what you know kind of transition uh, needs working with uh, agency correspondence. There's, there's just a lot of different things that can happen um, through the presidential um, transition work that we do. Our communications team is, uh, they do all kinds of stuff, communications. It is uh, everything from marketing, branding, um, web design, uh, uh, writing, editing, op-eds, media, press, uh, kind of all that happens with our communication staff and, and our interns support that work in a lot of different ways. Um, writing blogs, um, helping with podcast doing, um, some of the graphic design work, what, whatever it may be. A Gov Affairs team uh, does a lot with folks on the Hill. Uh, we have uh, uh, folks that, um, again, all of our research reports have 
uh, legislative recommendations at the end. So we do a lot with um, uh, folks on the Hill around particular recommendations that we have, pieces of legislation. Um, we do a lot of research on work that, uh, that the, the House and Senate is doing and, and where the management issues are that pertain uh, to the, the types of things that the government, the partnership works on. Um, so our Gov Affairs folks do everything from helping with research to um, preparing materials and you know, kind of being engaged in a lot of different things that our Gov Affairs team does. Our research analysis and evaluation uh, folks have uh, a lot of work that they do specifically on the research projects that the partnership is a part of. Um, so, you know, some of those are done in-house, some of those are done uh, in uh, collaboration with corporate sponsors, uh, and they, our research reports are up on our website. We've done everything on uh, AI and big data um, to very specific uh, hiring challenges facing the government and um, and we're kind of driving that. And then we also do a lot of evaluation work on, on our programs um, and helping the government better evaluate its work too. Our development team is uh, our fundraising team. Uh, they work with individual donors. They work with uh, corporate sponsors and foundations. Our intern on our development team uh, helps with uh, foundation reports, for example. Um, prepare, in the fall, we'll have um, our uh, big program that's focused on recognizing federal employees. They do a lot um, in, in support of that work uh, and, and kind of engage a lot in just the, the development function of the organization. And then we have uh, several positions on our government leadership and management programs work. Uh, we do uh, virtual training now. Uh, we've done some in-house prior to this, uh, have done in-house prior to this. But our, our uh, government leadership and management programs uh, range from you know how government can be more effective, how are we better training leaders uh, at all levels of government, um, what are some of the, the workforce issues um, that happen, and our interns have done everything from helping to develop uh, slide decks for different presentations, they've uh, helped uh, in the, the providing of training, um, running, the, kind of helping to, to produce the, the virtual training that we're doing. Uh, they've uh, helped manage different correspondence and um, assisted with the, the relationship development there with different agencies. And uh, there's just a whole lot of things that can happen in that space. Um, and we're excited about the work uh, that all of interns do, but I think especially in that, uh, I think for the government leadership and management programs, it gives people a chance to learn about those, um, those topics as well. It's getting some work done there. So uh, that's kind of a quick overview of the intern positions. Um, before I uh, kind of the you know how to apply is um, on our website. Here's the link if you need that um, there, or you can just do a web search for the Partnership for Public Service, and then um, on our About Us page, it has uh, information on our internship program, so you can learn more about it specifically. And then if by chance some of you are uh, graduates and are looking for a full-time position, uh, the partnership does have uh, open positions now uh, that we are hiring for um, and our staff positions are available on our careers page and uh, you have that link there. So that's a lot of information. It looks like there are several things that have come through in the chat. So um, we can take some of those questions uh, now, Eric, and, um, and then if other folks want to jump in, I want to make sure we can get to, get to whatever people need. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for that. And um, um, I'm, I'm, I'll read the few that have come in, in the chat already. And I welcome anyone else who has questions to either put them in the chat or use the hand raise feature. We're glad to hear from a couple of you over video. And uh, I'm sure uh, Amiko would like to hear from you and, and your interests and why you're interested and hear your questions as well. So um, there are two questions that are sort of related here about mm -hmm. eligibility. So um, uh, one was if, if you have to be a permanent resident and one is uh, if international students uh, can apply. So I imagine those could be answered uh, together perhaps. Sure. So um, if, if somebody is, is uh, work eligible, we've ha had them participate. So the partnership has not uh, sponsored interns ourselves, but a lot of times people will have um, the, you know, the authority, the ability to work uh, while they're here. And so if you have, if you're in that status, um, then then we, we've certainly uh, hired folks in the past along the same lines, uh, but we're not in a position to, uh, to sponsor someone specifically. Great, and that's a, a great opportunity for many students who are interested in supporting the, the missions of the federal government but can't work for the federal government 
directly, you know, working with a nonprofit like yourself, as long as they do have eligibility uh, otherwise, uh, is, a, is an opportunity there. And I see Denise had also asked, uh, and this might have come up when you went over the uh, positions a little bit, uh, anything else about the, is it important which major someone has? She specifically uh, said in here, so are business students eligible even though their MBA might not relate to public service? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that I really appreciate about the partnership is that we're really open to a lot of different types. We don't have a preference, uh, right, of, of that. Um, uh, we've had people major in everything from uh, public health to business to nonprofits to English to math. It just We've had just a range of folks and on, on different teams as well. So we don't have a preference for any particular major. Great. Um, uh... Florence, uh, Florence asked, what are the working hours? So perhaps you could uh, expand a little bit on the variability. Sure. Of the yeah, you know, so it, when we've been in the office, the working hours have been nine to six, uh, core hours have been nine to six. Um, the, uh, the change to working remotely and recognition that with COVID-19, people have really different situations at home. Uh, so we have just shared with our employees, including our interns, that our expectation is that they get their work done, they put in the number of hours a week that's that's needed, um, but we do not have core hours in the same way. Um, we have some folks, uh, family situations being what they are, for example, where they needed to work really early in the morning or really late at night um, so that they can focus on caring for kids during the day, um, or, you know, worked on weekends. Uh, we have some folks that, um, you know, have had kind of intermittent hours, so I'll work, you know, sometime in the you know, in the morning, work sometime in the afternoon, work sometime in the evening, but have had breaks in between. Um, we have not required anything in particular other than that uh, people will get their work done. Yeah, and have tried to be as flexible as possible, recognizing that schedules uh, in this environment are particularly challenging and we wanna be as supportive as possible of all of our employees. So we've not had core hours in the same way. And what we have done, however, is ask that people share their hours with their colleagues so folks that know when they can be expected to receive, um, you know, when they'll be online, for example, or if they can't be available for certain meeting, meeting times, then the folks can plan accordingly. Uh, but there's, there's just a, a range of ways people are going about it right now, and uh, we're appreciative of the, the flexibility that's being provided. Great. Um, I see some more chat questions. I want to transition, if she still has her hand up. I saw Noemi had her hand up. Uh, Noemi, would you still like to ask anything verbally and introduce yourself? Um, no, it's fine. I saw my question in the chat. I just have a really weird relationship with Zoom where it kicks me out sometimes. So okay. I'm good, but thank you. Thanks for being here. We do welcome other people to raise your hand. Uh, we'd be glad uh, to, to not only hear your question, but uh, hear a little bit about yourself so and i'm going to paste the link to apply in the chat here i'm also going to address this question and place a different chat uh link in my email address in the chat because somebody is asking whether housing is provided uh i'm gonna call i'll see if you do have any resources on that and and they'll also let our students know that our team at fiu and dc uh, does have some information for students on that so on our talent lab website which i just pasted our internships page does link to a variety of of internship housing options that students who get a DC internship can look into and decide to uh, to go into. And my email address, ericf at fiu.edu, is also there for students who want our team's help on the logistics of getting to DC and housing. But uh, is there anything uh, on the partnerships end there? Yeah, we do not provide housing for interns. We do provide some resources in a similar way. Um, actually, our the intern cohort put together as part of it, we refer to them as action learning projects. Um, this is a part of our intern program where uh, we ask interns to kind of develop a project that, that they believe will serve the, the needs of the organization um, based on some of the, the challenges they've seen. And one of them, one intern cohort, uh, put together a, a housing reference a, a resource because that was one of the challenges that their school did not provide the same type of resources that you do. Um, the, the partnership you know, doesn't provide housing and so uh, they put together that and we share that with, with uh, incoming interns as appropriate. Fantastic. I see here uh, Ariana asked about if you uh, graduated six months ago, can you apply? I know it's open to people with degrees. Can you Talk about alumni and if there's a certain time out of college that they have to be within. Sure, you know, we, you know, we've had folks uh, come as interns uh, at, at all different stages. 
Um, our, our work is much is, is more geared towards, I think, at the, the undergraduate or recent college grads. We've had a few folks that have uh, that were looking to transition, and I think one it did an internship with us. Uh, after she was looking to change careers, and she had been in the workforce for, I want to say it was like five or six years. Um, uh, and we had several conversations with her because we wanted to make sure that the um, the the work level was appropriate, um, given given her uh, considerable experience. Uh, but yeah, we've had folks intern uh, at, at Elder Stages, and uh, if the funding through FIU. Um, may not apply to folks that have graduated, but we do have, uh, we do pay our interns um, as well. And so the person would go through a competitive process that way and if selected um, regardless of uh, undergrad or graduate status, um, that, that's very possible. Okay, and since you brought it up, there was a question in here about how to access the funding uh, specifically for FIU students. So, you know, we can both clarify um, that, that funding would would go towards making sure a student does get paid the same rate that you mentioned on your slides um, and you know though the process is still competitive it is helpful in uh, ensuring that that one or more FIU students gets the opportunity to to be really highly considered for for one of these uh, positions was there anything else on that now we um we yield to the school as to the process that they use so um, sometimes schools have uh, students fill out different forms or you know things along those lines. So Eric, we would just yield yeah. to whatever works for FIU um, so, mm -hmm. and, and work that out together. Yeah, so process-wise, anyone that was selected who is currently enrolled at FIU, you'd be hearing from me and uh, we would work together to get that money dispersed as a scholarship uh, to you, but it, it would be in the, in the same amount that was discussed in terms of those full-time rates and then also um, prorated rates for working part-time. Um, there are some related questions here about, um, I guess, transition to federal government or um, relatability to working with federal government. So I don't know if you happen to know, um, uh, one question is getting at, do we know how many people or in general, if it's common uh, for people to start a mm -hmm. partnership and go to federal government careers? And I, I suppose one of these other questions is somewhat of a reverse question in terms of, uh, do you have a requirement or preference of people who have experience who have worked with the federal government? Uh, yeah, so uh, on both fronts. So we uh, have many people who leave the partnership and then go to work in the federal government. Um, that's, uh, I haven't run the numbers recently. We, you know, that's kind of, the, we have a mix of folks who go back to grad school, a mix who, you know, might go work in the private sector, um, you know, folks who go to work for government. Um, one of the things I'm really happy about is, is partnership is that people don't leave because they're unhappy, or excuse me, they're not leaving because they're unhappy. They're leaving because they have a phenomenal opportunity and, um, you know, have, have moved on to, to something that's, that's well aligned with their career interests. So um, I think as people have worked at the partnership, they've kind of, you know, to kind of maybe work a little bit more with, with an agency, um, you know, or kind of realize that that's, that's an agency they really want to be a part of. Um, and so it is, it is common for folks to go to government after uh, being at the partnership. Uh, our current staff uh, is a mix of folks who've been in government, like myself, uh, and some people who've never worked for government, intern or in full-time position um, in, in coming on. So it's allowed for us to have, I think, a really good mix of people um, and perspectives, um, that it's not a requirement uh, that, that somebody has government experience prior to coming here. Perfect. Um... I saw someone had asked a question about what the interview process is like. Do you have any uh, advice on, on that? Uh, sure. So the interview process um, it, uh, varies. We have, um, uh, we, as part of our process, we have two people read every uh, resume, um, really trying to reduce implicit bias or anything that might happen. So we have um, folks that uh, have uh, review resumes. Um, there are, um, there's a, an interview that happens as well, again, has multiple people in there. Um, we're, uh, even in this environment, particularly, understandably, all doing all remote um, uh, interviews, so you know, to the extent possible over um, Zoom or Skype or, or something along those lines. Um, uh, and though there may be some that have occurred over phone, uh, but just giving people a chance to, um, uh, to, to kind of connect and uh, do that, that way. So um, it's usually, 
the process. Um, every once in a while, somebody may have a second interview, a second round of interviews, um, but for the most part, it's just been the um, application materials uh, and then an interview and then decisions are made. And again, we're hoping to kind of make sure that that process is lean. Um, again, taking into account kind of equity issues, um, but we, we do understand the importance of students having, especially for folks who are returning in the fall, you wanna know kind of what's available, what your schedule might look like and, and things. So we really do try to move that process along. Fantastic, because we're talking about the application interview process. Uh, Gabriella did ask uh, a kind of precise question about the application itself. It says we have the opportunity to upload work samples can they be academic papers we've written or what other documents would you constitute as Yeah, it's a good question i think um and, and teams may have different things that they're asking for in the application material so i would pay attention to you know if the team's asking for something specifically if you want to upload something in addition you can um i would say something that's that's aligned with the type of work you would envision doing there so for example if it's a um if it's on the comms team and you want to be doing an academic paper um, you know, to show kind of writing ability there. Um, we don't do a lot of academic papers, you know, from the, um, from the comms teams, but maybe, you know, blog posts or something similar where, um, you know, it would be a, a, a type of uh, kind of uh, job preview to the type of stuff that you would be doing um, or, or related to the type of work you'd be doing that way it may make sense. Um, but for the most part, people just respond with what they've been asked for in the application materials. Perfect. Um, about, yeah, uh, um, we do have a question about whether credits are available for the internship and, and the non, but that's probably more an FIU related question. And that is mm -hmm. the answer that on our end, you know, that each academic yeah. department uh, has their own course code and or own procedures and, and, and for what it would take to be allowed to enroll in that course and what you have to do to get that course credit. So that does vary a lot by major. But uh, Emiko, it sounds like you had uh, a comment on, on the partnerships end for helping with that. Yeah, we, we have had students who have come to us, you know, with they you need to have an evaluation form for, you know, it's, it's tied to academic credit for them. Uh, that's not everybody, but but we certainly will work with a student and whatever needs they have for the, for their home institution to, um, to get the paperwork done that they need. Fantastic. And FIUNDC is glad to help as well, though, again, you know, usually uh, that's handled without issue by, by the major uh, academic department. There's a question about do you have students that work full-time and study full-time? I imagine this, this varies a lot, but you might be able to speak to how common it is to be a full-time intern while still in school or any. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it, it's really varied. Um, we do have some folks who have, uh, particularly grad students, who've gone full-time and then uh, worked for us full-time. Uh, in uh, the undergrad level, um, they it's probably depended on their program. I would say for the most part, people haven't, if they've done a full academic load as an undergrad, maybe they haven't done a, um, a, a full load, a full-time position as an intern. Um, what's common is particularly if people here like in DC for an academic program, that they've, you know, as part of their program, they have to do an internship. And so technically they're, they're you know, kind of full-time in their program and they maybe be with us for 32 hours a week, for example. Um, so it's not full-time, but it's close. Um, so it, it just kind of varies and depending on what the students are, you know, what works best for the students. But we've had, um, particularly in the fall, we've had full-time interns and we've had part-time interns. The part-time numbers really vary. I would say probably not less than 15 or 20 hours a week, um, but it, you know, certainly it doesn't have to be 40 either. Um, what usually happens with that is, uh, you know, as people um, make it known through their materials or in the interviews, um, you know, we have then tried to allocate a portfolio of assignments that would that would kind of account for the amount of time that somebody's expecting to be interning. So, um, if somebody is not going to be with us 40 hours, we wouldn't give them 40 hours worth of work. Um, we would try to kind of right size the portfolio so it's it's aligned with when the students would be available. Um, and that becomes part of the conversation um, upon, you know, kind of in the interview process and upon hire. Great. I, I'm really looking forward to hearing your question, uh, your answer to Tiana's question here, because I think it's a really interesting one. And, 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 and I don't know exactly what the answer would be because I see the pros of both. But Tiana is wanting to know, uh, since there's multiple 
positions and departments available should if there's a difference between these two for an individual student should a student apply to a position they're most qualified for already or the position they're most passionate about uh, that's a good question so one of the things that we do um have in our uh in the application process you pick kind of one like you know one team that you would that's like first choice um but you can also acknowledge other teams that you would be interested in and as people are reviewing we inevitably have some folks who apply to one team where it's like you know i don't know if they'd be a, the best fit here but they would be a great fit on another team and we do share information among our hiring managers um, so that that students have the most opportunity if you know if they may not be right for this role but something thinks they could be good for something else um, we, we have allowed for that so that it's not like sorry you didn't apply therefore you're not you know you're not considered um, but to say you know we we have the um, the ability to uh, to move uh, to include candidates in, in other team searches if, if that's appropriate. So I'd say apply to the one that, that you're most interested in or you know the one that you know that whether it be the most interested or how, how you feel you're most qualified, uh, that's up to you. But know that on, on the back end, um, you can also, you know, if you share that you're interested in more than one team or if they think that you might be good for another position, um, that can get shared as well. Okay, great. And this is kind of a related question coming in right after, uh, so we can stick on the topic of, 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 of identifying the best opportunity, because I know looking at the, the list, if I was looking for an internship, I'd be interested in more than one uh, as well. Um, so we're also seeing the question, I know we can apply to only one position per term. Are we able to complete two intern positions over two terms? Uh, it's a good question. We rarely have people um, intern for two terms in a row. Um, it's uh, in that there's a couple reasons for that, particularly on the same team. Um, we we used to do that a lot more, and the feedback that we got was that it just wasn't as helpful um, in the second go round. That the the interns didn't feel they were learning quite as much, um, and uh, and also that we want to make sure that we're providing op you know opportunities for other people too. And so if we keep the same 15 interns over multiple terms, that means other people can have, have an opportunity to intern. So um, we have, have moved away from that. It doesn't mean that it's not possible, but it's very, very rare um, that we have somebody that stays on for, for more than one term. Um, there are some uh, indications on that too. It depends on if they're on our payroll or on the school's payroll um, that we can get into if, if needed. But, but um, we very rarely have people stay on for more than one term. Okay. So, um, just to, yeah. she was correct though that you can only apply for one position at a time. Yeah, you'll you'll apply for one, but you can note that you're interested in others, and then we'll, um, you know, again we can share information on the back end if if a candidate may be better suited for another team. Um, that happens quite a bit, uh, so that that would be that way. And if you were to, somebody were to apply for more than one position, you know, it's certainly you're welcome to do that. It's just the um, as far as one term to the next, or you know, kind of have a break in between. That can be done. Um, it's just it's rare that that would be the direction that we would go. Um, where we have had quite a bit of the students who've interned with us, gone back to school for a semester or two, would have you, and then applied for a full time position. And then come back to the organization. So uh, we actually, we I'm trying to think of hires in the last year, but we've we've had a few folks in the last year that we've had, that's been a situation where they had interned with us, they went back to campus for you know to finish up a semester or two, and then they they applied for a full time position and came back on staff. Great. And the the, the two remaining questions I see so far are. Um, are there some positions that are more competitive or sought after than others? And can students use uh, USA Jobs generated resumes to apply? Um, so the um, jobs that are more, it ebbs and flows a little bit from time to time. Um, so some teams, some, some terms for whatever reason get more applications than another. There's not a, a whole lot of rhyme or reason to that. The one team that I think consistently gets more applications is a government affairs positions. Um, and so that, that team usually has the most uh, applicants. Um, if, I, if I were to look at like trends, that, that team probably has the most over time. 
Um, but other teams, you know, one, one semester they may have several and other semesters they, they may not have any, or terms, excuse me, they, they may not have, you know, they may have very few. So it, it just, just kind of where people apply and what's of interest to them at the time. And then for the uh, USA Jobs Generated Resumes, uh, you can submit that. Um, very rarely do people use their um, USA Jobs resumes, um, but you can. Um, we don't have a, a stated preference. Um, so, you know, whatever, whatever make the most sense for, for you and, and how you want to uh, submit, we, we will take either. Great. Hey, while I wait to see if uh, any other chat or Henry's questions come in, I would like to take the opportunity of having a few minutes here to let people on this call know a little bit more about the Talent Lab at FIU in DC, because if anyone's on this call because they're interested in DC internships, and if anyone gets a DC internship, including one at the partnership in the future, uh, knowing about and being engaged with FIU and DC in the Talent Lab is, is very important. Um, we have a series of events every single semester for our DC interns, and, and those are also currently virtual, so, uh, even if uh, a virtual internship was the format uh, for someone selected to this, that would be available and then normally and in the future will be in person at our, at our space in Washington as well. Um, so for those who have not been to the Talent Lab website, I posted this earlier, talentlab.fiu.edu will get you right here. One thing I want to point out immediately is I mentioned our semester of events every single term for DC interns. Because it is available virtually for the summer, everyone on this call has access uh, to all of our events that we are, are hosting this summer. Uh, the Talent Lab webpage has our This Summer DC Comes to You flyer, which has the tentative dates and titles of a lot of our events. And you can also download uh, the full schedule and we'll continuously update our uh, site here with the events that we are hosting and how to RSVP for those events once they are ready. Additionally, we have an exciting opportunity tomorrow that many people on this call might be interested in RSVPing to. Um, we partner with another Florida-focused nonprofit organization here in Washington called the Florida House on Capitol Hill, and we partner with them every summer to ensure that there are breakfast meet and greets with members of Congress for all summer DC interns. And that is another thing that is available virtually this summer, which means that um, even if you are not physically in DC or don't have your internship secured quite yet, you can engage with this, this type of talent lab programming. So tomorrow morning, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, all Floridians and Florida college students interning in DC or interested in interning in DC are invited to meet Congresswoman Shalala. Um, you can see here the RSVP for this is to Florida House, RSVP at FloridaHouseDC.com. I'll post that in here, FloridaHouseDC.org, excuse me. And uh, if you RSVP to them, you'll get the information to log on to, to that call and, and have a chat with other Floridians and uh, Congresswoman Shalala. So please consider uh, joining us for that. Uh, Congresswoman Shalala, in addition to being a champion of higher education, including FIU, is uh, one of our South Florida uh, rep representatives in Congress, and we would love to have a great FIU showing of support for that event. So please join us for that. Please check out talentlab.fiu.edu. Um, that, in addition to our programming schedule for our immediately upcoming events, is where you uh, let us know you're interested in a DC internship if you haven't already. Uh, apply for future rounds of our new Hamilton Scholars DC internship program and read more about that. Read more about our fly-ins, which uh, again, another op uh, uh, example of something that's virtual for now, but great opportunities to, to come to DC short term in the future when things are back to normal. And also uh, to let us know that you have your internship to onboard into our cohort so you can have our full support of services and uh, that we provide to our interns. So if you were to be selected to the partnership program in the future, I'm sure the partners at the, at the partnership would help let us know that some FIU students were selected, but you're definitely going to need to onboard on our site as well. So I know that's a lot if you are first being introduced to this, but my contact information is here, Eric F at FIU.edu. And we hope to see some of you online with Congresswoman Shalala 
uh, tomorrow morning and at many other events that we are hosting throughout this summer and beyond. So we are seeing a lot of thanks to both of us for the great information session. So I would also like to, to thank you, Amiko, for, for being here and for your time and for your overall partnership of making sure FIU students have the opportunity to apply uh, and be considered for this position and, and, and reiterate our thankfulness for the partnership. You mentioned, you know, not every school has the same level of partnership uh, with uh, your organization as, as, as FIU and, um, and that some of our high level administrators from both of our organizations and, and uh, donors from both of our organizations have recognized that and it is a pleasure to, to, to be able to collaborate with you. Is there any uh, closing remarks that, uh, or last minute thoughts that you had to share, Amiko? Uh, just to say thank you to all of you. I know there's a lot going on now. I appreciate your willingness to spend some time with me this morning to learn about the Partnership for Public Service. And we hope you're interested and, and consider applying for the fall. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you online uh, tomorrow, bright and early, with Congressman Winchdale. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.